always. So I am a master trader. All my trains in in profit. And of course, in the name of Jesus, I am a master trader. All my trades in in profit. So let's walk in that energy. Let's walk in, in that. So if you had a good day today, if you cashed out today, let me get a 555 in the chat. No, I'm not 555. That's a 777 in the chat. Let me get a 777 in the chat. If you cashed out today, that is awesome. If this is your first time on the call, your first time with me, let me get a 111 in the chat. I want to know who's on the call. Let me get a 111 in the chat. If this is your first time with us this evening. So, and then I need a 222. If you're still trying to understand how to cash out, you've been on the call. Look at there, you took 12 trades and 10 were in profit. See, that's the testimonies I'm looking for. Congratulations, congratulations. So you actually went and you cashed out on your own. So congratulations. Ah, first time on the call this morning. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm sharing my screen with you. That is phenomenal. I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited. So 100% the last five trades. Well, let's start to call out that way. Keep dropping it, keep dropping it. How do we do today? So we got 10 for 12. We did 100% on the last five. What else have we been doing? See, this is why the way we do things with BYOB is so important to us, to myself, to Mr. Rogers, to Dr. Bifewood, and every leader that's out there in the markets as we're spearheading this BYOB as a movement because you actually become the signal. You become the signal. You are, you are the signal. And so that's what I like. And that's, that's what I want to see. So we got my screen share up this evening. And as I stated, this is training. And the reason why I want to cover this, you are like us. Hold on. Before we even go any further, I got to get, you know, we got to be in the right energy when you're around me. So it's not, I want to get like y'all. You, you need to do your affirmations. I am a master trader. All my trades in a profit. That's where it begins. And you, when you speak that over your life and you speak that over your trade account, you see, we don't, we don't ever want to speak the wrong energy. We don't ever want to speak the wrong thing. And I'm going to tell you, everything is energy. And that was so phenomenal for me, even this weekend. Look at there, eight for eight, eight for eight, trading one currency pair. Okay, awesome. And so what I'm saying is, before I'm telling you guys, my affirmation was I, one of my, because I have many, but one of my affirmations was I am a master Forex educator. So that was my affirmation. And I was still trying to figure out how to count pips. So I want you to hear me. The pips, the movement on the chart. So I was messing that up. Stop loss, where my take profit was what my stop loss should be, using the pip at. And so it's just, I just messed it all up. And the point behind it was, is while I was going through that, my daily affirmation, I didn't get frustrated. I didn't get upset. I didn't do any of that. My daily affirmation was, I am a master Forex educator. Now to be an educator, you need to, you pretty much need to know how to count a pip. So that's why we do these calls with these aff affirmations. That's why when we speak, we speak life over our trades. That's why we do that. And that's why that's so important. So we start here with the, with the affirmations. You believe in it because what's in your heart is what will manifest. So um, I just wanted to say that because I want everybody on here in the right energy. I want everybody in here walking away. And, and you see these testimonies that keep coming? These testimonies are coming because you shifted your mentality first. You shifted your mindset first. You shift that and then your bank account will follow. <laughs> I love you guys for that. I'm telling you, I love you guys. So now, what are we going to talk about? I get so many questions on when is a good time to trade? What currency pair should I trade? Using the, um, using the actual uh, the time frame confluence to help you guys understand. But I want to take it a little deeper tonight and help you understand the why behind the what. I want you to be able to 
to see this is how you become the signal so where i am is at myfxbook.com okay that that's where i'm at and if you can see there are a few things i want you to understand first we're going to start with liquidity so you people want to know when's a good time to trade you know the market you have to learn how to understand the market you have to learn how to read the market i can't tell you when it's a good time to trade I can't tell you what's the best thing for you and you understand that even more tonight. I mean, I actually had a conversation with someone earlier and I'll tell you all day, you guys have heard me before, GBP, I love GBP, but they don't like GBP. They like, um, they like a completely different currency pair and I can't even remember what it is, honestly, but it's one that I, I mean, it's one of them I like but one of them I don't like. Somebody's told me they don't like trading USD before. Somebody prefers, you know, certain currency pairs, but it's all personality based. But how do I know which one I want to trade and which one is going to work for me? It starts with you understanding the market. So Tasha, I can't tell you the best time to trade for you. So what this is, is liquidity. In order to trade in a market, what you have to have is liquidity. So the liquidity is the money flowing, is the money that's flowing through the market. We want the money flowing through the market. So that's actually the amount of trading activity in the market. Let's make sure our lines are muted. Let's make sure we keep our lines muted for the integrity of the call. I keep muting somebody and you keep unmuting yourself. So thank you very much. So, but when we're talking about liquidity, now if you have a question or something, drop it in the chat. Drop it in the chat and I'll address it. But same person. Okay. So the amount of trading activity, the liquidity is the amount of activity. So if you are trying to understand Hold on, I'm gonna have to try to get this. So. All right, so now, so basically, let me go back. Liquidity, you want liquidity. So the liquidity is the amount of trading activity in the forex exchange market. So remember, currency move. So when you're dealing with liquidity, that means money that I can actually move around. It's not an asset. It's not something fixed. It's something that... Now, I'm going to ask everybody to make sure you keep with the integrity of the call. Make sure you keep your line muted because I keep muting the same person. I'm going to kick you out of the call. Thank you. So, But it's the amount of trading activity that you actually have in, in the market. It's the amount of money that's flowing through. So if we think about the stock market, which a lot of people are familiar with the stock market. So if you're familiar with the foreign exchange market, when you think about stock market, which most of us are familiar with because we know what that is, we're talking about 226 billion. So when you think about the foreign exchange market, we're talking about 6.6. .6 6.6 So we're talking about 6.6 .6 trillion. So that is what this that's what's in the foreign exchange market. Now with that being said, with that being in the foreign exchange market, the liquidity feeds into the volatility. So when you're talking about volatility, volatility is how drastic the price changes. So when we talk about, so when we talk about like, okay, you want volatility in the market, that, that comes with some risk. And that's why we preach and we talk to you so much about risk management. And so when you look at the volatility of the currency pairs, you want to make sure you understand what currency pairs that you actually want to trade on because you want the volatility for your comfort level, for your risk. The same way that 
every, you know, if I go to do my retirement plan or anything, as a financial advisor, I would sit down and I would ask you, um, what's your risk level? Give me your risk level number on the scale of one to five or the, based on what I was looking at, I need to know, we would base it based on different things. So everybody is different. So that's why I don't like answering the questions, well, what is your favorite currency to trade? What is your favorite pair? What is the best time to trade in the market? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. And I want to kind of show you how that creates your proper, you know, creates your trading opportunities that you can actually tailor to your personality, but then also understand your proper risk management in that as well. You definitely want to do that. So now, like I told you, I'm at my FX book. And what I did is I came to the liquidity, okay? Came to the liquidity. Now, this is real-time data. So you're going to see, just as you saw me just click this, you saw this change. So what you're looking at is the liquidity in the market right now. So it's at about 9%. So when we get on the calls and we say, oh my goodness, the market's not moving, or when you see the market moving a lot, you can actually come here and you see what it's actually doing. Now, I want you to see that the liquidity chart, what it's showing you, is that understand that this is the average of liquidity over the past 24 hours. So if it's going to be about the same as the last 24 hours, you're going to be sitting at 100%. So, and now if it's telling you if I'm at like 110%, then it's 10% higher than the last 24 hours. So that's, that's pretty much what that means. So right now you see it's at 9%, so it's rather low for this time of the day. So we can actually kind of figure out what, what the volatility is for that time frame. So if you can see when I was at 12, now this should be in UTC time as well. But when, if you can kind of see that when I'm sitting here at this liquidity, this was actually at 800, this was actually at 800%. So it was extremely high. So what was going on in the market at that time? Now this is the overall liquidity. This is not based on a currency pair. This is just what's happening in the movement that's actually happening and flowing through the market. So you see the average liquidity for the time. Now I can actually zoom in, I, I can actually zoom in. And when I zoom in, I can actually get deeper down into, you know, the time frames. As you noticed before, I just got the hour. So now I'm actually moving through. So if you can see, of course it's low, it's okay. See, look at it's real time. It moved to 22%. So at this 6.6, .6, this 6.6 .6 trillion that's flowing through the market is going to give you those times that's good for you to trade. So these are, these are those times that you actually will want to trade in. So when you see liquidity and you see things flowing through the market. So if I look and I see I'm at 34% right now, I'm at 22%. So do, do I really, really, am I looking for the market? So that should answer your questions. Well, how long will it take my trade to play out? Well, why is the market so stagnant? You know, remember the money has to flow for the market to move. So if my trade is not playing out or it's taking my trade a long time, then the likelihood is that the liquidity is low. So if it's going through fast and I hit take profit real fast, the likeliness is that it's got a lot of liquidity that's happening in the market. So remember, currency has to flow, currency has to move. And this will help answer some of the questions that you all actually have. So I actually want to go to my volatility. And when I go to my volatility, here are a lot of currency pairs. So if I'm looking at, they have quite a few on here. And of course, this is a chart that's based in pips because I have show volatility in pips. So understand that, you know, even like when we're talking about, I'm going to point this out, like I'm talking about the US 30, you see this is converted to actually, they're talking about pips, but it's like it's points. So just know that US 30 is always in points, but it's gonna show that spread as well. But of course, this is not pips. So I just kind of want to point that out to you because just like the ruler, when we're on the chart, when we're on the market, you see it saying show, I'm asking for it to show everything in pips. So I'm asking for is good to read in pips. What percentage is good to trade? That's what I mean as far as you have to get in there and play with it. You have to understand your personality. So of course, I want a higher percentage for, you gotta think about it, if the market is spiking, let me go back for a minute. If the market is spiking or is something 
that's going on. For example, do I want to be like some people say I don't trade the news? I mean, look what it just jumped. It was just at 22%, now it's at 187. This is real time, so it's it's moving consistently. But look at right here. This one was at 800%. So that might be news. It might be something that happened. Something spiked the market. Something got money moving. Something got the currency flowing. So do you want to be in the market during a time like this? As you can see that it was rising. You can see that it had a lot of activity that went on between these time frames. It was a lot of activity. So do you want to be in the market at that time? I can't tell you what's good for you. I, that's something I can't do. You have to figure that out for yourself. That's why I started the call saying, you know, I was speaking to someone and I was speaking to someone and they like this and, you know, my personality, I like this. Some people are swing traders. Some people like scalping. I mean, that's what I love about trading though. That's really what I love about it is that everybody's personality is so different. Everybody's personality is different and every and there's a way for everybody to win. There's a way for everybody to come out and profit. You just have to figure out what works best for you based on your personality. So I'm going to focus on this 15 minute chart because that's where a lot of our trades take place. But you see where I'm at. You can always come back and try this for yourself later, right? You definitely can. So what you're looking at is, so on this 15 minute chart. So for example, this is my, this what I'm looking at is my volatility. So remember a higher volatility means that there's more trading opportunities. It means that I can grab more pips. It means that, you know, once again, there's more risk. So if there's more risk, you have to practice proper risk management. That's important. You have to practice proper risk management. Now I'm going to tell you the most popular trades that's traded, the most popular currencies that's traded is the Euro USD. You got the USD JPY and the J GBP USD. You see USD is in all of those, right? But those are the most popular currencies that are traded. So those of course are going to have more liquidity, more volatility, um, because they have more movement. But this is what I want to show you. So when we focus, right, some of you all, when we're trading CHF, right, see, you see the CHF that's paired. I want you to pay attention to that. So when I'm paired with a CHF, and I'm going to go back to the 15 minute chart, when we talk about why time frame confluence is so important, look at how this is sitting at a 2.4. Okay, it's sitting at a 2.4. Now understand these numbers are calculated. This is not a statistics class, so we're not gonna get into how it's calculated. We're not gonna get into what it's made from, the standard deviations, and all of a sudden we're not going there tonight. We're only talking about the numbers and how, and and the fact that the lower the number, the less volatility, the higher the number, the more volatility. That's what we are. Basic upfront, that's what it is. So um, so when I'm looking at CHF, you see I have a low number. Now, in low compared to what? So let's look at some of the ones that move quite frequently. GBP, right? GBP AUD. Look at the volatility in the GBP pair. So a GBP pair has more volatility in it. That's why you grab more pips. That's why you pretty much cash out before you even touch your time frame confluence, okay? That's why that's there. So and look at um, the euro. So euro paired with a CHF is only at a 3.4. But when it's paired with an AUD, it's at an 8.7. So what's that saying to me? That GBP pairs have a lot of volatility in it. AUD pairs have a higher volatility in it. So you see the eight, but even AUD CHF, that's a 5.8. So which one is stronger, AUD? is the one that has more volatility, it carries more weight. So look at the AUD pairs pretty much are sitting there at a five point something. So do, is, are you seeing it? Let me get a five, five, five if you are, are you walking, because we're gonna look at some of these on the charts as well. So I just wanna make sure we get a five, five, five. I wanna make sure you guys see this because no, after you finish tonight, nobody should ever, you should never have to ask anyone what currency should I trade? So, so what currency should I trade? And what's this and what's that? So, so okay, so in a vibrato when the London market is open and it has a warning that it's a high volatility time. Correct. 
good observation because look what happens with my euro okay euro is not as high but the gbp is look at my gbp pairs so gbp is typically higher and so that's what we want to look at so that's a very very good observation because it is a lot of volatility in that market because of the gbp pair and then even the aud pairs you can see um it had the aud is running right behind it so that's that's where we are now my exotics you hear me talk about it because some of you guys like to trade the czar so if i'm looking at a euro czar look at the volatility look at how this jumps up to 157. so when i'm telling you that it has a lot of volatility a lot of movement in that currency pair that's so important for you to understand what's happening it's important for you to pray so to have more risk management so if i'm trading a czar currency pair i'm gonna do more extra steps so when you see me moving through the charts when you ask for the czar and i'm i'm doing more time frame confluence than just what the, the normal this is why look at look at the risk because higher volatility more risk so yes i want to trade it because that means more profit it's more trading opportunities but that also means that I what that also means that I want to make sure when I, I want extra confirmations when I get in my trade. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna check it just a little bit more. So that's that's what that means. So and then look at gold, okay? Look down here. So you you sitting there and that's sitting at 78. So that's why when you see me checking for certain things with those currency pairs, that's why it's happening. This is another exotic. So look at that one. So exotics are higher. They have it's it's so much higher. So where was I looking? So so what do we need to learn from this? GBP has more about out, the outside of the exotics and the indices and the metals. GBP has the highest volatility, and then AUD is right behind it. So that's what you're learning from this. And then you still have it. And who has the lowest? CHL. So do what does that say to me when I'm see when I'm practicing and understanding my time at I mean my risk management is that I'm not going to touch a CHF pair without doing time frame confluence. I'm not going to touch a CHF pair unless I know because the likeliness of me grabbing my pips and cashing out guess what look at it, the the movement is the the liquidity the money that's flowing through that currency pair is just not there. So you can trade it but you want to have that extra understanding, that extra confirmation when you do trade it. That's what you want to have. You want to make sure you have that. So do I have any questions before, I before we move to the chart? Do I have any questions before I move to the chart? Now's the time to ask. No questions? Okay, let's go to the chart. Let's go to the chart. Oh, heat map. I did want to show you this before I change over. Your heat map. So when you're talking about the strongest and weakest currencies, when now it's this, remember this, go ahead and type it in the chat. Go ahead and type that question in the chat. So remember this feeds, the market feeds this and not vice versa. But just so you can kind of understand what's happening in the market, you can kind of see the weakness in the market and you can kind of see what's the strongest in the market and this helps you does the volatility affect the pip movement so meaning that you often look at gbp pair and know that it would generate absolutely it sure does and that's where we're going to show you right now on the chart absolutely but i can look at this and i can say okay the us 30 not moving right now but you know what is so what's the strongest euro czar when i looked at it earlier it was all negative so this is real time so you understand that when i'm here this is actually real time so let's go to the chart and let's look at some so your question gbp let's start with gbp because we actually got a CHF up. So I'm going to come back to that, to that CHF. But I want to start with a GBP. 
GBP AUD was one of them. So with this GBP pair, when I'm looking at this candle, I'm looking at this candle, I can grab this ruler and put moving this along. You see that's 18. Now remember the market was low, right? The market was kind of low. So it still grabbed 18 pips. We saw that the market had fluctuated a little bit up, but it was low. But you see that's 25. I can come back. And that one candle is covering 20. Okay, this candle, I got about 17. Now let's check something. GBP, JPY. Did I even, oh wait, did we even see? Hold on. Make sure I have my JPY on there. Okay, it's just low right now. So that's all that is. So as you can see, you, you look what you're covering on those candles. And sometimes like in the morning, when we're on here in the morning, that candle's like 38 pips or that candle will be 20 pips to, to 40 pips. You, that's what you'll get with these, with these candles. So that's what you get with these GBP candles. And so just right now, that's not what it is because of the time of the day and what's happening. But it's still going to be more, right? It's going to be more. So that can be a 60 pip movement based on the time. But you see, we're still in the 20. So we're still, we're still rather high, right? We, we're still rather high. So now let me see here. Let's go to, let's pull that CHF back up. So look at that CHF. So I just went 20 some pips on the candle that's solid. And now on CHF, I've only gone five. So I've only gone five pips. So with you, you see the importance of understanding the movement in these currency pairs. They're all not the same. Every currency pair is not the same. So let's just look at this. That's another five. Let's look at another one. Let's grab this big candle right here. How, what did it give me? That's only 16, but what did that give me on the GBP? So it didn't take for me to have a candle with a huge wick sticking out of it like that on the GBP pair to get 16 pips. So that's only eight. So if I'm trading, okay, and I'm looking, and I'm trying to make sure I get my pips, all of that's only 28, but I got that off of one GBP candle. So you can trade CHF, you just wanna make sure that you understand and you're moving with that time frame confluence. So you, that's, why, that's why that's important. So now you see why it's not a must-do confirmation as our three confirmations, but now you see why it is important with some of these currency pairs because you want to make sure if this only went if i did my three confirmations which we'll go over i definitely go over it but if i did my three confirmations and the market in itself see of course i think i get it here but you get it there but that's already in the past so we know it's happened whereas i get my three confirmations and guess what? That's only three pips if that actually moved for it. So you want to put yourself in a position where you can increase your accuracy rate. Because why is it only 92%? Where did the other 8% come from? Well, that 8% has to come from somewhere like this or you and your pip reaction time. So that, that's where that comes from. So do I have any questions? Any questions? I know I have a question or two, because what you'll do is you'll, you'll, um, you'll drop it in there, you'll message me, drop it in the chat, let's talk about it, because I want you to be a signal. I want you to understand how this moves. See, and that's only seven. So it met every confirmation, but it's only seven. So let's talk about the BYOB cash out, and we're going to use this currency pair. <laughs> <laughs> not you didn't even say apples and oranges okay so they're not like apples and apples it's more like comparing apples to giraffes <laughs> not even apples and oranges okay but does it help clear it up though does it help you understand the market a little bit more does it help you understand your trading awesome see that's that's what i'm going for 
that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm looking for. So now the BYOB cash out, right? The BYOB cash out. And see, now you can understand, and I'm going to show you on both of them, actually. So, and we can look at some more, we can analyze some more, and we can go through some, but I want to show you. So first thing first is I'm always looking for the stochastic, okay? I'm looking for the stochastic. My stochastic, it runs from zero to 100. Now, wait, this your first time seeing that? Oh, wow. See, good stuff. So it runs to, it does have an app, but I'm, I'm actually on the on website. I'm on the website. So from zero to 100, you see it runs from zero to 100. So when I'm around that 80, oh, you're welcome. When I'm around that 80, you, I want that crossover. And I'm gonna address something else while we're talking about this stochastic as well. So I need that crossover. I need that blue line to cross over the red for a sell. And for a buy, I need that blue line to cross over the red and an upward momentum for a buy around that 20. Now, this crossover is very important. I get, now I'm saying this and I wanna be as clear as possible because I get a lot of questions, I get a lot of screenshots. I get a lot of people sending me pictures of their trades. And what I want you to understand is that this crossover, this is the most common error that I find. You all are not looking for this crossover. This stochastic is so important. Now also, and I'll show you when we drop down for the time frame confluence, but if I can't stress anything else to you, I want to stress that this blue line must cross over the red in a downward motion for a sale. It's around the 20, the blue line crosses over the red in an upward motion for a buy. That's where it begins and my stochastic is always first. Because understand this, just because it's sitting around the 20 does not mean it's a buy. Just because it's sitting around the 80 does not mean it's a sell. It can keep going. It, it can go to zero. That's why I'm stressing this runs from zero to 100. It can still go to 100. It will go to zero. And you don't necessarily want to ride the wave from 20 to zero and then back up. So make sure you have that curve. Make sure you have that curve in your stochastic and it's going in the right direction. That's the first step. The second step is I'm looking for a red candle. For a sale, I need a red candle with a flat top. For a buy, I need a green candle with a flat bottom. So that flatness on those candles, that means these are trend candles. So let's show you the difference. The underlying Japanese candles. Actually, I need to drop my arrow. So for a sale, that's my underlining, that's my underlining arrow. And for a buy, this is my underlying arrow, okay? So now let me, let me show you the Japanese candles up underneath there. So look at the difference. So this is why, see, Japanese candles you have to read. I have to read them. Do I have an engulfing pattern? Do I, you know, do I have a pin bar? You know, what am I looking at? Do I have my tweezer tops? I have to read those Japanese candles, but I don't have to read Hikinashi candles like that because they focus on a trend. They remove all this noise. So you don't have to say, okay, I'm gonna jump in on the second candle. No, no, no. The only thing I'm doing is I'm looking for the trend. And my trend candles, they tell me I have a good trend is when I have a red candle with a flat top or I have a green candle with a flat bottom. And you notice that what's also a good trend you notice how this looks like inverted steps, how this candle, the next candle shoots down lo longer. This one shoots down even longer. This one pulls down longer. This one pulls down longer. Now, when do I have indication of a change? Yes, the first candle. It just needs to have that flat top. See, I knew somebody. There you go. And you're not the only one. So thank you for asking. You Trust me, you're not the only person. So. So this is indication of a sale. This flatness tells me that's my trend. Now, if I had a candle like this with a wick on it, I don't want that candle. There's still some buy and activity that's too strong underneath here. I don't want this one because it has a wick. I need it to have a flat top. I need my green candle to have a flat bottom. And then this third confirmation is my PSAR, which is that parabolic stop and reverse, okay? 
that's my parabolic stop and reverse. So I'm not going to touch this just yet for time frame confluence. What I'm going to do is I am going to just pull this up and we're going to look at the GBP pair in comparison with this. GBP AUD is the one we were looking at. So same, same thing. And this one's had a lot of consolidation going on. So I want to find a good one for you to look at. So let's start here. I got my blue line cross over the red in the upward momentum. Green candle, ah, I like this one. Let me show you why. Green candle, flat bottom. Then I got a wick, then I got a wick, right? So this, if this had a PSR flip, then no, you wouldn't take that one. But when my PSR actually flipped to the bottom, now I have a flat bottom green candle. So you see how you can still get wicks within your trend, but what I need is to make sure that each and every last one when I went, and this is what I call my trade activated because I, my momentum started here. Also understanding my momentum is not gonna stay there. It's not gonna stay at the 20, it starts at the 20 and then it begins to move up. So that's what I'm looking for. And then, then what I'm looking for this, so this is where this one would have been activated. So we're gonna activate this one right here, okay? So these are these two currency pairs. We're actually just, like I said, we were looking for one on each. So now, my stop loss, for all of you guys to understand, stop loss goes below the PSR for a buy, above the PSR for a sell. Below for a buy, above for a sell. So now, let's go back. See, and somebody else asked it again. No, when these form, I don't have to wait for the, let's go to the five minute because we got less than a minute. I want you to watch this candle form. We got less than a minute. And I need you guys to watch this candle form because you guys are asking the questions that I get. So those are good questions because typically with Japanese candles, those are accurate. Those are very valid questions. But with Hikinashi candles, Hikenashi candles are trend candles. They are trend candles. So they remove all the underlying noise. They are actually calculated using historical data from the market. Um, moving out, it's just, it's like once, like I just said, we're not gonna get into calculations and the statistics and everything behind it. But I want you to understand that you do not have to wait and go through all of that. What you can do is just sit here and wait these 20 seconds out and watch how the candle form. The only thing that happens sometimes is it's your first one. If it's your first one, is you have to wait for that wick to pop. Sometimes within the first minute or two, a wick will pop out. So I want you to see it's about to form now. So you, it's when it forms, it's formed as the candle is. And sometimes it'll push in like it's just a buy. See how it just formed? And then you actually have a buy pushing through. So that's the candle. That's, that's what you're gonna get from that candle, that's it. So it might push up a little bit, but noticing this means that that trend is starting to change some. That's what that means. Cause it did not form where it formed way out here. So that should answer your question. So, and that's why I wanted you to show one when they form, because I know most of you are familiar with the, most of you guys are familiar with the Japanese candles. Now I gotta find my thing again. There we go. So now let's go back. Let's talk about the time frame confluence. Let's talk about the time frame confluence. So So with the time frame confluence, what you're looking at is I need to check my my time frame below to make sure it's still going in the low in the direction I want, in this case a sell, and in this case a buy. So I'm gonna drop down to the five minute chart. So the buy, I'm still in a buy on a five minute chart. And on the five minute chart for the sale, I'm still in a sale. Now, if we would have got this a few uh, with the momentum, understand my stochastic was still in a downward momentum. This is important. My stochastic was still in a downward momentum. 
So that tells me if that stochastic starts to curve, if it starts to change, then you don't even want to consider it anymore because, or you want to see if it's a correction or, you know, if it's a correction, then it's going to turn back around, but it could also be a trend change. It could, it could be a shift in the market. So, but for me, you do not want to just jump in. You want to make sure the five minute needs to still be in the cell. That's why I put my crosshairs here. You can see that it is. And over here, that needs to be in a box. And you can see that it is. So now I want to check the hour. I need to check the hour. And the hour needs to be in a cell. And it's, it, does, it will not, hear me clearly, it will not be looking like the 5 and the 15. It won't. It needs to look like something I will put on my watch list, okay? It definitely needs to look like something I put on my watch list. So because I'm dealing with the CHF pair, because I now know and understand volatility, and I know that CHF doesn't have as much movement, would you take a trade on this right now? No, look at this. Would you put this on your watch list? So yes, my candle is pulled back some, but it's still green. Second, you know, where's the pizza? Second, I mean, you see it's about to flip. The blue line, the stochastic is flat line, but you know, it's, it's the stochastic is flat line. So it can be going into a sale. We just don't know yet. And look what look what's happening right here with this candle. So, but would you be willing to take this trade knowing that it has the lowest amount of volatility in the market? Or would you want more of a setup? I would want more of a setup. I would want more of a setup. So that's why you'll see sometimes, let's look at it on this one, okay? Let's jump to the hour on a GBP pair. Right, you want more setup, exactly. So if I jump to the hour on a GBP pair, which I'm probably way over right now. So jumping to the hour on a GBP pair, my GBP pair has actually, it has a good setup for a buy. I mean, the stochastic actually flipped up. Um, I got a green candle and, but no PSR, but you can see that there's a shift and there's momentum. So basically what I'm getting at is because of what we know now, I'm not taking a risk on this one, but if this was a GBP pair, I would be taking a risk. But because I know it has the less movement, the least amount of movement in the market, I'm not taking a risk. So on the hour, we're, on, we're looking for trend only, exactly. You're looking for the actual swing of the market. So how do you know the trend? By looking at the hour and the four hour. So on this, I can see it's starting to set up. So that would, that would be trend. But of course you wanna do, if you want the true trend in the market, of course, and I come draw my lines, my trend line, right? And I'm not gonna move the chart to go there. But so I know if I will have more. So if you're looking for more than 10 pips, which is the next step, if you're looking for more than 10 pips, because this is 10 pips in cash out, then you're going to start actually looking at draw accurate, you know, looking at what you're doing, making sure the current trend of the market is going with the trend of the market. So we know this current swing of the market at this point. At this point, that current swing of the market is in a buy. So for GBP, definitely taking it because I know the movement is there. And this is how we practice. This is how we increase and how we work on our proper risk management. But for a CHF, absolutely not. I'm not taking this trade. This would have told me absolutely no at this point. So do I have any questions, any questions, any comments? Any questions, any comments? So look at the czar. This one was the highest, right? The czar had the highest. So some of you all like to trade the czar. But when I'm looking at, yes, that I'm glad to hear that. So really helpful info in learning to read the market. That's awesome. So when I'm looking at the czar and I come down, actually, this is why you see me trade gold and the czar or different things on a five minute chart as opposed to the 15 minute chart because of the amount of volatility and the amount of movement in these currency pairs. 
So if I'm gonna look at the czar, for example, where it didn't have any movement a little while ago, let me just find, I just wanna show you a good setup from the beginning. So now you see I'm on a five minute chart and being on a five minute chart, okay, this is where, okay, now look at this. Look at that wick that's pointing out the top of this. By the time my piece are flipped, I had a red candle with a flat top. And then when my piece are flipped, I actually had a wick. So I have to wait to the next candle and see if that's still valid. I'm not taking a trade. I do not enter a trade without all three of my confirmations being accurate, being there. All three of them are important. And if it started getting a wick, it could possibly be something else happening underneath that's changing. So you want to make sure you have all three. You want all of them. So, so with this, now you see, of course, I'm going to drop down. And I'm going to check my one minute because I dropped down a time frame. So now you see why I don't trade off the one minute at all. And when I come here, I need everything headed downward, which it is. It's still down because remember, even though we got a curve here and this is going up a little bit, we didn't see this. We didn't see this. Oh, I didn't count the pips yet. I didn't on this. So, but I, we can. So I dropped down and then I want to check. I want to make sure. So this is the five minute chart. And I'm just, I'm like doing more accuracy because of the movement. Oh, that's in a cell. My on the five minute, I'm supposed to be checking the 30. That's in a cell. But look, I probably look at this. It's 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 got some movement up on this 30 minute chart. And why is that? So I'm probably not taking it till here. I'm waiting for it to come back around. So it's just extra confirmation, extra, extra, extra. And so when all that happens, now I'm in, I'm here. So it's just extra confirmations. And I'm gonna tell you with this are. So it did, it moved down and then moved back up and it moved. But I mean, like I said, it's up to you. It's up to you and your personality. Just make sure you get in a demo account with it. Because I've done this with the czar. And I like in this case, you see where it works out in your favor. But czar, when I tell you it moves quick, it moves quick. It moves fast. So th that's why it had it was so high on the volatility. That's why. So you know you can go in, you can grab your pips. And like I said, just let your personality let you test it out in a demo account before you touch it. Because you're going to be sitting back there, you're going to be like, whoa. When you see how fast it moves, when it's moving. It gets real stagnant for a while, and then it just ups and it moves. Yes, it's faster than gold. So much faster than gold. So, and it'll just sit there for a minute. It, it, will, it can sit there, and then all of a sudden it just moves. So that's 320 right there. Look at that. That's 320. Just right there. Three, actually, no. 348. I wasn't down far enough. So that's why when we pull this up on a call, I don't mind pulling it up, but also at the same time, I want you to have your confirmations and make sure you're comfortable with taking that trade. And if you're learning how to trade, I need you in your demo account with that. So, and let me show you. Cause you guys will ask for it, but I want, you know, I just kind of like for you to understand. So, I mean, look at how, <laughs> yes, 0 0.01, <laughs> you definitely want to start there, yes. So, and I trade these to support and resistance line to support and resistance line. So, I'm not, you know, you're not going for, you're not going for, um, like, I'm not, oh, let me do 10 pips. Like, 10 pips and cash out is on standard currency pairs when we're doing indices on the US 30 or something. I recommend you do 10 points and cash out off the five minute chart. You know, going back to the volatility chart, this was about a 10. So right now it's at an eight, but you see that's at a 3.5, but it's just not a lot of movement in there right now. But if you notice, it's going to fluctuate around there. So, you know, grab your 10 points and cash out off of that. So, and in this case, like on gold, gold, I do the same thing, support and resistance to support and resistance. So, you know, they're very easy to spot. But don't touch this till you can understand how to draw these. So they're real easy to spot. Don't touch it till you know how to draw them. And why is that? 
If you notice the market always pauses, it always halts, it always does around these areas. You always got this. And so as you can see, it's a, it just bounces back and it gets stuck in there, but at the same time, it's a support, it's a support and it's a resistance line and the market moves in between that. So you notice how it came down, came back up, came down, I was going back up. So stay within those support and resistance lines and do not touch this till you can draw them. Cause you're not gonna be able to go. I mean, but the amount, but the reason why do people like to trade it? If you got that risk management, why? Because if you'd have just caught this downtrend, understand the market structure and everything else, if you'd have just caught this, I mean, literally, look at this. How many pips is that? Just, just look at that. Just catching that downtrend from earlier. That's why that's so high. That's why that's so high. <laughs> so that's, that's why that's so high. So that's why I scout that. You know, I'm not doing anything else with that. But because the same way I moved down like that, so understand corrections. You will have corrections. You will have corrections. Now, tonight is training. So do I have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? We got a few minutes left. Do we have any questions pertaining to the training that we just did? I know y'all be ready to trade. You should be able to cash out though on your own. Now, now you should be able to cash out. It's sitting on, it's sitting on a resistance line. But how many pips does this move, right? So now you can actually look at this. Yes, that is correct. That one moved 14. So you got decent movement in the Euro cap. The swing, yes, it is. The swing is smart. Swing just tells because I can be trading a correction. So you notice this in a downtrend and this one trying to go up on the hour. I could just be trading a correction. So you see it's it's going down on a on a higher time frame, on a four hour time frame, it's, it's in a sale overall, but it's not pushing through the support line because underneath it, I'm trying to push up. My momentum on the hour is pushing up, but it's not pushing through either way because it's a four, there's a force fighting against each other. So that's why I stuck there. So more than likely what's gonna happen with this is it's gonna, unless you get some news or unless something else happens, you see, you got that four hour that's pushing down. It needs to finish pushing down. But my stochastic is also at the bottom. So it might come back up and then come back down because of where my stochastic is. But if I look at this, this one might also just finish cycling through and then come back down for that sale before that four hour pulls back up. That's why understanding these important resistance is so important. But I could tell you it's going to close this gap. It is going to close the gap, but you just don't know if it's going to come up and then come back down before it does that. So I got a, a overall buy here. I got a sell here. So it's, it's not pushing through there right now. It's, it's not pushing through. Any more questions? Any more questions? You're so welcome. You guys are so welcome. So where we were, oh, you're so you're welcome too. So where we were was that's FX book and under market. You just that's the volatility, the liquidity. So that that's what we're looking at. Oh, and the other question. I'm oh, I can't forget to show you this. The correlation. I get this too. The correlation. Here you go. So if it's positive, like they're they correlate. So you got AUD CAD. AUD CAD. Of course, what AUD CAD is going to be a hundred percent correlation, but you know what what trades with it and what trades against it. So if I'm buying a AUD USD, then Euro AUD should be in the sale. But see, we know that because that's a counter currency. We got a base currency and a counter currency. But here is it in black and white. You got your AUD USD. When I get to Euro AUD, it's a negative sixty three percent. Why is that sixty three point eight percent? Why is that? because so the trades are going in two opposite directions so you can actually look at look at this as well 
and help you understand what currencies trade with each other and which ones kind of trade against each other. So, I mean, so look at this. Euro GBP is going to trade at, against the AUD JPY. It's a negative 72, so they're negatively correlated. So now instead of you trying to figure out, well, what trades with this and what trades with that, here it is right here in black and white. So, I mean, it's not, of course, it's not every single currency pair, but this is definitely something that can help you. So with the US 30, what's being correlated with it right now? So Euro AUD is going against it. So USD CAD is going against it. So are they positively correlated or are they negatively correlated? This ought to help you. So, and then of course you got the czar, XAU, USD, what goes against gold? <laughs> Look, almost everything. Gold does its own thing. Correlation, it says correlation. See, correlation. Under market, volatility, heat map, correlation, liquidity, all right there for you. So, you're so welcome. So ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's tonight's training. Understanding the liquidity of the market, understanding the volatility, understanding how you can learn the market for yourself so you can determine how you become the signal and what signals you want to take. So now you can act, you are actually the signal. So that's what that, that's what tonight was all about, was helping you become the signal. And you guys are so welcome. So with that being said, make sure you stay on the line, stay on the line, stay on the line. Because the gentleman that I want, oh, thank you. The gentleman that I want to bring 